is actually creating a reduction in inflammatory cytokines in the body. It's reducing leptin levels. Hyaluronic acid um, is one that I've seen really interesting results with and not for the reasons we expect, okay? The initial thinking with oral hyaluronic acid was, oh great, we're gonna take oral hyaluronic acid, hyaluronic acid's gonna go in the blood, and then that is going to get incorporated into the extracellular matrix, and we're going, it's like getting a injection of hyaluronic acid in the knee. Does not work that way, based on what we know right now. But let's look at a, a review. So this here looked at, uh, this was Japan, China. Japan, I believe Japan. There's a uh, there's many different types of uh, oral hyaluronic acids on the market. The one that's pat I tend to like patented things because typically that means they've been studied and researched and there's no difference. Meaning, a curcumin product that's not patented. I have no idea if that's the same curcumin in this study versus this study versus this study versus this study. If I have patented theracurmin, I know it's the same in this study, this study, this study, and this study. And so there's, there, I tend to gravitate more towards that stuff, especially when we're looking at research, because you could be comparing apples to oranges when you're looking at different herbs and things like that, just because we know that plants grow differently in different climates. There's different bioactive molecules in them based on soil quality based on water and temperature, and so it's important to have some standardization. So this is a patented product called OralVisc. OralVisc is the, the patented name that is then found in various different supplements, okay? It's, an, it's a preparation of oral hyaluronin um, that we can take orally. So <clears throat> what they found here was that between placebo and the uh, OralVisc, is that patients had a reduction in their pain over a 12 month period with taking this. This was patients with uh, knee osteoarthritis, okay? Again, initially they were looking at, oh, well, osteoarthritis, low hyaluronic acid, and so they thought that was the case. However, what they actually ended up finding that what is happening is that the oral hyaluronic acid is actually creating a reduction in inflammatory cytokines in the body. It's reducing leptin levels that is then having a positive impact on obesity, inflammation, and therefore arthritis. Okay, <clears throat> there was one study that uh, did look at uh, some collagen turn, or sur sorry, some chondrocyte turnover. Uh, in, or sorry, collagen, it was collagen, collagen turnover in the, um, in the actual cartilage, and it was improved in the patients with oral hyaluronic acid. But again, it's, there's no way to actually say that that's because we incorporated hyaluronic acid into the cartilage. It's more so, I believe, that we are getting activation of toll-like receptors in the gut, which are going to have a reduction or cause a reduction in pro-inflammatory cytokines. We are going to increase IL-10, which re results in further reduction of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which is going to have a reduction in total systemic inflammation and therefore have benefits on a condition like arthritis. Uh, this is another study looking at uh, visual analog score of patients on oral visc versus placebo over a 12 week period. What we see is that there was a statistically significant difference at eight weeks. So based off this, what I typically tell my patients when we start this supplement is that we're doing it for eight weeks minimum because we don't know after four weeks if, it's going, if, you're, if they're in the camp that they get a positive response. We typically are going to wait 12, or sorry, eight weeks and more to know, okay? So, in the researchers trying to figure out 
part of why this oral visc works. One of the things that they stumbled across initially was that the oral visc appears to decrease leptin levels. We're going to talk heavily about leptin when we get into the hormone section because it is um, technically in part a hormone. But I wanted to bring it up now because we're talking about this. So leptin is an adipokine. It is made in our adipose tissue. Levels go up when we have obesity. So it, it generally correlates with BMI. So a patient with a BMI of 30 is going to have a lot more uh, leptin than a patient who has a BMI of 22, for example. <clears throat> now, there's other things that can also increase leptin levels outside of obesity. Inflammatory cytokines, TNF-alpha, and I believe IL-6, um, it's on another slide, can increase production of leptin by the adipocyte. And so we know that in patients who have that are obese and inflamed, they tend to have even higher leptin levels. And clinically, I see that as well when I, when we, because we can measure leptin levels in the blood, um, and correlates pretty well with that. So this study here looked at in the blood, but also in the synovial fluid, which is really, really important, because again, if we are going to start talking about therapies that are going to impact inside the knee joint, I would like to know, does that thing actually get inside the knee joint? Right? If, for example, this is just an example, because I don't know the data on curcumin, but if we want to say that curcumin is going to have an anti-inflammatory effect in, on cartilage cells, well, do we actually even know that the curcumin gets inside the synovial fluid? If you don't look at synovial fluid analysis, we don't know, okay? This also, when we know that leptin levels, for example, are found in the synovial fluid, this gives weight to research studies that look at, in a petri dish, what happens when we add leptin to chondrocytes. Because we know that in the knee joint, leptin is in contact with chondrocytes. It's still a different environment than a petri dish, but it at least gives us some weight to try to understand that, okay? So baseline, looking at serum leptin uh, and the synovial fluid leptin. With placebo, we did not see a decrease in the leptin, right? 21, 21, 25, 27. However, with the oral visc, they saw a decrease in leptin in the synovial fluid that was statistically significant, and also a decrease in leptin levels in the um, in serum. Okay, so we saw a decrease. Clinically, I also see that when I start patients on oral visc, from whichever brand I, uh, which there's two main brands that I use, um, Zymogen and DaVinci Labs. Um, but leptin seems to go down.